Hello and welcome. This is Sunday, February 28, 2021, and we're about to start our yoga class today. So let me position this camera a little bit better, and we will begin. So everyone, please come to a standing position your mat. Have your yoga mat right here. Put these wires out of the way here. There we go. <laughs> we center this a tiny bit better. There we go. So typically we have our yoga classes in a heated environment with a space heater. Um, we have water available. We have our yoga mats available. And basically you just need yourself. So you can, if you'd like to, choose to do your class in um, yoga gear, as they call it. But you don't really need to. This is a beginner's class. So this is a class that anybody can do. And... A lot of the postures are very basic, so we'll get into them, we'll describe them in detail, and I hope you have a lot of fun. So try to enjoy class if you can. See something here, excellent. Okay, so first thing we want to do is do some basic prep work. So we prepare for our class, by turning the wrists, doing some spaghetti arms to prep the spine. Shrug our shoulders, one direction and the other. And then we do these neck turns, one direction and then the other. Now the very first class I streamed live on YouTube was a little bit, the video was a little choppy. I hope that's not the case. I'm using a different browser and different settings. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully you can see my muscles and my joints doing these exercises. Now, let's come to a standing position on our mat with our feet together, toes and heels touching. Interlace your fingers, so knuckles under the chin comes against the back throat. Please keep your knuckles glued to your chin throughout this entire breathing exercise. We're going to be breathing in through our nose and breathing out through our mouth. The throat acts as the passageway for the breath. We're going to do deep, long inhales, Inhaling all the way to the top, exhaling out completely. Let's begin. Inhale through your nose. And your elbow goes up high. Exhale out your mouth. Elbows touch. Inhale through your nose. Spine is straight, stomach is in. Exhale out your mouth. Only your neck is back bending. Inhale through your nose. Keep your body weight in the heels. Exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Eyes are looking back. Inhale through your nose. Now your eyes are looking forward. Exhale out your mouth. Try to keep your forearms and wrists straight throughout. Inhale through your nose. Full lungs at the top. Exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. And the last three breaths on your own. Last one.
arms down by your side, shake out your fingers, roll out your wrists, roll out your shoulders, and roll out your neck. Second set. Interlace the fingers, knuckles, and the chin, thumbs against the back throat. And let's begin. Inhale through your nose. Hold those up high. Exhale out your mouth. Elbows touch. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Keep all your muscles nice, tight, and contracted. Exhale out of your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. And the last three breaths on your own. Last one. Arms down by your side, shake out your fingers, roll out your wrists, roll out your shoulders, roll out your neck. One direction and back. I like to do these little optional neck bends too. Holding your head and gently pressing, and then the other side. And then I like to clasp my hands behind me and lift up. You can create a mudra with your fingertips. Raise it up. Do it for your shoulders, your scapulae. So we start off our postures with half moon pose, with hands to feet pose. Start off with your feet together, toes and heels touch. Inhale, raise your arms up, squeeze your palms together, interlace the fingers, release your index fingers and cross your thumbs. Stretch out, up out of the way, stretch up and up and up and try to touch the ceiling Then bend your body right and left a number of times, giving yourself a warm up this morning. Right and left, feeling that wonderful stretch all along both sides of your body. Now I'm going to show you that there are three possible positions of this posture here. So some people, when they first start off, they're going to have their arms bent a lot like this because it's a challenge for some people to even get their arms up like this and keep their hands clasped together. So this is a challenge for a lot of people who are just starting off in yoga. The second thing, uh, the second potential possibility for a lot of people is they can stretch up, but they can't stretch up all the way. And then there's this gap between the palms. So over time, time you're going to try to squeeze the air out of that, out of your palms, and stretch up even higher. So the third look looks like this, where your elbows are above the top of your head and your arms are really close together. Now, in this position, as high up as you can, with your spine as straight as you can, without bending the elbows, without bending the knees, bend your body over to the right as you push your hips out to the left. This is going to feel extremely intense on the left side of your body. And you're going to try to bring your left hip forward and your right shoulder forward to get both hips and shoulders 
parallel to the wall in front of you. You're going to keep your body weight in the heels. You're going to contract all of your muscles all along the front side of your body. You're going to look straight ahead with a big space between your chin and your chest. You're going to have your stomach in. You're going to keep squeezing the air out between your palms and stretching towards the sky. Inhale, stretch up towards the sky. Exhale, bend your body more to the right as you push your hips out to the left. Come down and push. Come down and push, and then push. Change, come back up. Readjust your grip, inhale, stretch up and try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, bend your body over to the left as you push your hips out to the right to your maximum edge for today. Same on this side, you're going to feel an intense stretching sensation all along the right side of your body. Your thighs are tight, your stomach is in, body weight is in the heels. You still have a big space between your chin and your chest as your eyes are looking straight ahead. Continually squeeze the air out between your palms. Stretch your fingertips skyward on every inhale. On every exhale, bend your body more to the left as you push your hips out to the right. Let's go. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, bend your body more to the left. Push your hips out more to the right. Come down and push. Come down and push. Come down and push. Change. Come back up. Readjust your grip. Inhale, stretch up and try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, drop your head back. Look way back. Try to see the wall behind you. Now immediately bring your arms back way back. Trace your fingertips along the ceiling, then imagine tracing them down the back wall. Push your hips forward, lean back, fall back, more back, move further back. Try to touch the wall behind you and change. Come back up, forward, forward. So that seems like it could have been intense, right, for many of you for a, as a back bend, especially if you've not, never done it before. That's normal. It's going to feel a little weird bending backwards. So now in this position, when we're down on the ground, we're going to do a little, we're going to call it um, a heel up and down. Move the heels up and down, then move your hips back and forth, a hip shake, I call it. And then we have our shaking of the head, yes. And shaking of the head, no. We're just trying to move these joints around as best as possible. So one direction with the shoulders. You can go as slow or as fast as you like, but try to do this more slow than fast. So don't do it too quickly. Just do it just enough so that it feels good for you. Everybody's a little bit different. So your fast may be my slow, my slow may be your fast. It depends on the person. So try to move through the class slowly and methodically, and then you can't go wrong. So now slide your fingers underneath your heels. Keep the fingers together. Wrap the elbows very tightly around the calf muscles. Glue your stomach to your thighs, your chest to your knees. Lift your hips up. You're going to lift your butt up high in the air. You're going to pull and stretch down. Pull and stretch your upper body down towards the ground. Try to get your face on your shins below the knees. Try to keep your knees close together. Try to lift the hips up higher. Roll forward towards the toes, lift the hips up even higher, pull and stretch down. Pulling is the object of stretching here as you pull and try to get your legs straight. Try to get your hips stacking over your knees, over your heels. In one straight line, then you just lock your knees. You just try to make all of the muscles, contract them all around the knees. Keep everything in one straight line, lock the knees, eyes open, look behind you and breathe. Change. Arms with your ears. Stretch up one last time, arms float down, and breathe. Breathe and breathe and breathe. You are breathing before a yoga posture. You are breathing during the yoga posture. You are breathing after the yoga posture. So make sure that you're breathing every step of the way. Without breathing, this is nothing more than just exercise, plain exercise. With the breathing, this is what you're trying to link together, the body and the breath, and that's yoga. So second set. Stretch up as high up as you can and get into your right side bend. Try to stay perfectly still. Perfectly still, but you're still stretching your fingertips skyward. You're still pushing the hips over to the left. With every inhale, stretch up. With every exhale, bend more to the right as you push your hips out more to the left. Continuously pushing the hips out to the left. Everybody stretch up. 
Inhale, everybody. Exhale, bend your body more to the right. Push your hips out to the left, come down and push. Come down and push, come down and push. Change, come back up. Readjust your grip, inhale, stretch. Exhale, bend your body over to the left, push your hips out to the right. To your maximum edge. Concentrating on one point in front of you. Body in the heels. Remember, every inhale, stretch skyward. Every exhale, bend your body more to the left, push your hips out more to the right. So it looks like you're standing completely still. You're still really thinking about stretching skyward and then bending more to the left and pushing your hips out to the right. Everybody stretch up skyward. Everybody exhale, bend your body more to the left, push your hips out more to the right, come down and push, come down and push, come down and push, change, come back up. Readjust your grip, inhale, stretch up and try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, drop your head back, way back. This time you might be able to see a little bit lower on the ceiling. So stretch skyward, keep your legs straight, push the hips forward, and drop back. And try to reach down the back wall. And change, come back up. Forward, forward, hands on the floor. Lift up the heels, rock on the heels. Move the hips back and forth. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Shoulders. I add these little extras in my class. Not many teachers will add these little things, these little extra things. I believe that these little extra things can help free your joints, they can help warm up your body for the next posture. So that's why I add them. And I feel that they're very important, especially as we age. We want to make sure that our body is a well-oiled machine. So you need to do these joint, I call them joint freeing exercises. So, parastasana, hands at feet. Slide your fingers underneath the heels. Wrap the elbows behind the calf muscles. From the stomach to thighs, chest and knees, lift the hips up, lift the butt up. Pull and stretch down. Face in the shins below the knees. Roll forward towards your toes. Keep your body weight on the balls of the feet. Lift the hips up, pull and stretch down. Straighten the legs, lock your knees, eyes open, look behind you, breathe. Change. Arms with your ears, stretch up the last time. Arms float down. That, I think, this first posture, calf moon pose, is probably the most intense posture that we'll be doing in the class. Everything else is going to feel like, well, there will be flexibility exercises, yes, flexibility postures. But I think that half moon is basically the most intense posture in the entire class. And the funny thing is, it comes as the first posture. So the second posture is Utkatasana, awkward posture. Separate your feet about six to eight inches apart. So it depends on your skeletal hip width distance. Some of you might have wider hips, some of you might have more narrow hips. So adjust your feet to match your hips, your hip points. Arms up parallel to the floor, stretch forward and try to touch the wall in front of you. By stretching forward, I don't want you to shrug your shoulders. I want you to keep your shoulders away from your ears. There should be this big gap between your, your shoulders and your ears. Stretch forward, keep the chest lifted. Back is flat and straight. Inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, suck the belly in, bend the knees, sit down on an imaginary chair behind you. Sit down so low that your thighs are almost parallel to the floor. Please keep the same distance between your feet, knees, and hands. Your feet are flat on the floor. Your chest is lifted. Try to keep your spine straight. Imagine someone lifting you up from the top of your head and leaning your body back flat against the imaginary wall behind you. Keep your stomach compressed. Contract the abdominal muscles and change, come back up. Part two, raise up off the heels, high up in the air, high up on, slide down the imaginary wall behind you. Come down slowly. Some teachers will quickly, but I tell you to do everything slowly and methodically in this class. Keep your spine straight, keep your stomach in, chest is lifted, knees up, heels up, chest lifted, and change. Come back up slowly, come down. Part three, raise up off the heels, half an inch to an inch. Squeeze your knees together. Inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, just bend your knees. Slide down the imaginary wall behind you. 
Breathe as you come down. When you're at your bottom point, you're just hovering above your heels. Arms are parallel to your thighs. Thighs are parallel to the floor. Back is relatively straight. Hold it there. And change. Inhale, breathing. Slowly slide back up the imaginary wall. Slow for you. Slow and smooth. Feet back together, arms down by your side. And breathe. Breathe and breathe and breathe. I'm going to demonstrate this from a side view so you can see what's going on. So, separate your feet six to eight inches apart. It's about hip width distance. And come down for part one. Sitting down in an imaginary chair behind you. Try to get your back flat. Spine straight, feel that lift in your spine, chest lifted. Stretch forward, bring your hips back. Change. Part two, raise up off your heels. And slowly slide down, imagine a wall behind you. And change. So you want to keep your heels lifted up as high as you can. Oh, you can't really see my heels in this, in this view because you can't. Okay. But you get the idea. Keep the heels lifted up high. Shoulders away from the ears. Slowly slide down. And change. Inhale, breathing. Come back up. And feet back together, arms down by your side. Breathe. Next posture is eagle posture. And this is where a lot of teachers and I differ in the way we approach this. Some people want you to swing your arms very quickly, like some crazy bird, but that's not how we should be approaching this. We should be approaching this methodically. So start off with your spine straight. Inhale. Exhale, flip your palms, and then slowly bring the right arm underneath the left, cross high at the shoulders, then at the elbows, then at the wrists. Squeeze your palms, cross your thumbs. Now you're in this crazy right arm underneath the left kind of position. Now, you pull the elbows down, thumbs are towards your face. Sit down on an imaginary chair behind you. Right leg up high over the left. Twist your legs, slide your right foot down the left half muscle. You might need to bring your knees over to the right, upper body to the left to get your feet, knees, elbows, and hands in one straight line. Keep your spine straight, feel the lift in your spine. Lean back against the imaginary wall. Slide your right foot down more. Compress your abdomen, breathe. Change. Arms up. Stretch straight up. Flip your palms, so your palms are facing that direction. Slowly swing. Right arm underneath the left, cross out the shoulders, then at the elbows, then at the wrists. Squeeze your palms together, cross your thumbs. Thumbs towards your face. Pull the elbows down, sit down. Left leg up, high over the right. Twist your legs. Slide your left foot down the right calf muscle. You might need to bring your knees over to the left, upper body to the right. Feet, knees, elbows, and hands in one straight line. Try to lean back against the imaginary wall behind you. Shoulders away from the ears. Stomach is in. Breathe. And change. Thumbs up. Again, another symmetrical twisting the arms, right arm beneath the left. Find your posture and breathe. Change.
I'm doing everything slowly and methodically. Keep your heart rate at an even pace throughout the class. No hurty jerky motions. No abruptness in the class. You're just feeling and experiencing the rhythm of your breathing. Change. Arms flowing down. Have a sip of water for that first official water break, but you can have as much water as you can throughout class, so don't worry too much about what a teacher may say about your consumption of water. If you need to drink water, please do so. Some teachers are trained in a certain way, such that they never deviate from that way. And while that might be all well and good for a very structured beginning class, Teaching in the same McDonald's way isn't quite the way we should approach teaching yoga because yoga should be a very personalized experience for you. So our next posture is called standing hatin. So this one poses a lot of challenge for a lot of people. So you have to balance on one leg. Some of you might have issues with balance. That's, that's okay. We're going to develop our balance for today. So here we go. We shift our body weight over to the left leg, firmly press the heel into the ground, lift the right leg up. Now at this point, with your spine straight, you have three options in the standing up straight mode. You can keep your leg extended like this, you can grab onto the knee, you can also pull the knee towards your armpit. There's also a fourth option for those of you who know standing hip knee. Extend your spine up, round down, suck your belly in, round down. Interlace your fingers to the wedding, grab onto the ball of the right foot. Flex your toes back and press your left big toe down. Now, if this is all very intense to you, just try one of the first three methods and just stay there for the time being, learning how to balance first. Now, if this is everything, if everything is strong, stable, and solid, proceed to the next step, which is lifting up and kicking out until the leg is parallel to the floor. Flexing the toes back and kicking the heel forward. Now, if your right leg is parallel to the floor, and you're not bending, wobbling, or shaking, stretch your elbows down towards the calf muscles. Maybe even going below the calf muscles, look straight ahead. If you fall out, that's okay. Just go right back in for another try. And change. Reverse the order of the steps, which came in. Place your right foot down. Now, what's happening in my mind when I'm doing this stuff, right? I'm describing all of this stuff to you, and I'm also doing it. What's happening in my mind is, oh no, don't fall. <laughs> That's the number one thing. If you do fall, find a way to come out of it in a um, graceful way. So that only comes with continued experience. So initially, when you're first practicing this class, you might fall down, you might flop over, it might be a little embarrassing, but we're in the confines of our own environment here. Um, so I can't see you, you can see me. So if you fall, that's okay. You're just trying to learn how to balance in these crazy postures. There's a rhyme and reason for all of these postures. We're not just doing these just because we want to look cool. We're doing these to develop this particular posture, to develop our leg strength. So shift your body weight over to the right leg. Press the heel down. So you have these three options in standing, this, this, or this. We're in the fourth variation. Extend your spine up, suck your belly in, round down, reach beyond the ball of the foot, interlace the fingers, grab onto the ball of the foot, flex the toes back, press your right big toe down. Now, if the left leg to the floor, you can stretch the elbows down towards the calf muscles. My left leg is longer than my right, so I can't do the elbows beyond the calf muscles movement. So if you can, please do so. Hold it there, breathe. If you fall out, that's okay. Just go right back in for another try. Now, if you find that you're unstable, just go back to the previous step. Redevelop your firm foundation and change. Reverse the order of the steps. Come back out. Left foot down. So, what was going on in my mind there? 
oh no, don't fall. <laughs> okay, so, so here's the thing. You don't ever want to fear falling, but you should know that a fall will come naturally in some cases. In some cases, on certain days, even though you've done your, you've experienced this class a lot, and you've done this every single day of your life, let's say you practice yoga every day, invariably, there might be an off day, and you might fall, you might lose your balance. That's okay. Our bodies are different every day. Our minds are different every day. So just go with the flow. Don't worry so much about falling. Try to fall graceful if you can. So if you do fall, if you do lose your balance, losing your balance, try to regain it before you fall. And then there are ways of falling in case you do fall on the ground. If you fall on the ground, you're using your legs as springs to help condition and cushion the fall. So now we go on to the second set of standing head to knee. Shift the body weight over to the left leg. Right leg up. Do any of the first three if you'd like, or traditional standing head to knee. And forehead to the knee, chest down, head down, forehead to knee is the final expression. And change. Reverse the order, and I fell. And I fell gracefully. So remember, falling is okay. Just learn from your experience so that you can fall more gracefully. Now, don't ever place your hands out. So it's, it's hard to think about this when you're falling, right? Because we don't think when we fall, we place our hands out and suddenly we break our wrists or we sprain it at least. See if you can try to use your legs to cushion your fall. That will come with the time of experience. If you have a carpeted area, falling on a carpet is so much better than falling on a flat, hard surface. So, other side. Shift the body over to the right leg. Lift the left leg up. I'm going to extend my spine, round it. I'm going to grab onto the ball of the foot. I'm going to look straight ahead. And when I feel ready, there's a point where I feel like I'm ready. And then I proceed. And then there's a point where I can't do anymore because I'm at the maximum limit of what I can do in the posture. So in this case, I'm trying to get the legs straight, as straight as I can. I'm trying to keep the heel lifted up high. I'm trying to keep the heel in line with the hip. But if you can do standing head to knee on the left side, go for it. Just do it and breathe. Breathe and breathe and breathe. And change, reverse the order of the steps. Come down. Now, there's this thing called an optional one second back bend. You place your hands on your lower back, drop your head back, lift your heart to the sky. And change, come back up. And now we do standing bow pulling pose. So standing bow pulling pose, again, this is one of those things where if you have trouble balancing on your, on your single standing leg, you're gonna be working on that balance. I'm gonna show you how to do that in standing heads and so you start off, stand on, stand and shake your body over to the left leg, right arm out, elbow against the bottom, palm facing up, drop the right arm down, pick up the right foot at the inside of the ankle, not the outside. A lot of yoga people will do it on the outside. Grab the inside for this one. Stretch your left arm up. Now at this point, what's happening? Are you like, are you at a point of imbalance or are you balanced? If you're imbalanced, you need to work on your balance. You need to stretch up and kick your foot hard into your hand, and just stay here, just stay here, feeling that balance. If you want to go forward, go forward. Tilt forward, arm in line with your torso. Kick your leg back and kick your leg up. Stretch forward, kick up. Chest to abdomen parallel to the floor. Stretch forward, kick up. Stretch forward, kick up, breathe. Keep breathing. Stretch forward, kick up. Breathe. Stretch forward, kick up, don't give up. Stretch forward, kick up, press your left big toe down, change. Oh, <laughs> as you see, I lost my balance there towards the end, but I regained it. I regained it so it doesn't look like that I lost my balance too badly. What's going on in my mind during this posture? Number one thing, what did I say before? Oh no, don't fall. So 
Try to maintain balance throughout the entire posture. Try to breathe throughout the posture. When you breathe, that calms your heart rate down. So that's a very important point. Breathing is so important in all these postures because it helps calm your heart rate down so you don't get this intense fluctuation and elevation of your heart rate. So here we go, other side. Now again, if you're working on your balance, just stay here, stretch up, kick your left foot into your left hand and just work on this balance. If you wanna charge forward, you can. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Change. Arm down, leg down, take a breath. And again, I lost my balance towards the end, but I regained it, and then it came out. So a fall is going to look not so graceful sometimes, and that's okay. Try to, again, use your legs to help brace the fall. By that, I don't mean just stick your leg out. No, don't do that. You're going to learn over time there are movements that you can do to help you come down gracefully. And we'll get into that over time as the, as the classes progress and you continue to take more and more of these classes. You'll get to learn little tricks, little tidbits of knowledge based on my many years of experience doing this. So, second set. Go as far as you'd like in this. You can either stay here or you can charge forward. And by charging forward, when, when teachers use the word charge, it sounds like there's like some sort of like cavalry stampede kind of thing going on. That's not the case. You want to slowly move forward. So charge is actually not that good of a word. Many teachers use it. Change. And it's basically built into into the dialogue of the 26 plus 2. So that's why I like to say more often than not, tilt your body forward. The tilting seems like it's not, you're not driving into the posture. Like really you want to have like a certain amount of intensity in the posture. And you might not get that with tilt. The charge just gives the connotation of you're just going into the thing full force and, and there's no stopping you. Well, that's not exactly the best approach either. So there needs to be something in between a charge and a tilt. So here we go, other side. Keep breathing. Change. And take a breath and breathe. Breathe and breathe and breathe. Some of you might be able to hold this particular posture, standing though, for longer than other people. And that's okay. Whatever your posture is, which includes the duration, the length of the posture, just do it. Do it. And don't miss when some when the teacher says change, you can stay in the posture for a little bit longer if you feel it's beneficial for you. So come to the bottom of your space or Tula Dandasana, which is balance and stick posture. Stand up nice and tall. Inhale. Just like in half moon, we're squeezing our hands together, interlace the fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs. We're stretching up, elbows above the top of your head if possible. Step forward on your right foot, two to three feet, straighten the legs, left foot off the deck. As you drop your body down, left leg up. Body down, chest down, arms up. Stretch forward, stretch back, equally in opposite direction. Stretch and stretch and stretch. Change. Come back up. Stretch up some more. Try to touch the ceiling. Step forward on your left foot. Straighten both legs. Right foot off the deck. Body down, right leg up. Chest down, arms up. Stretch forward, stretch back. Equally in opposite direction, stretch and stretch and stretch. Change. Come back up. Arms squeeze down. Breathe. Breathe and breathe and breathe. Remember, you're still breathing while you're doing this posture. Holding your breath in a 
posture like this is bad news. Don't do it. So this is a one posture that really elevates the heart rate quickly. So you want to breathe at the end of it, calm your heart rate down. And we'll get into a second set. Right foot steps forward. Body down, leg up. Stretch forward, stretch back. Body, arms, and left leg parallel to the floor. Stretch. Come back up. Stretch up again. Try to touch the ceiling. Step forward on the left foot. Right foot off the deck. And the deck is the mat. Body down, leg up. Chest down, arms up. Stretch, stretch, and stretch, and change. Come back up. Arms float down. Take a breath and breathe. Some teachers call my posture the 10 second heart attack, but you never want to talk about heart attacks and stuff like that in yoga. So that's like really a bad choice of words, I think, for a lot of teachers to say. So it's really in a very invigorating posture. It really elevates the heart rate, and you have to be very careful doing it. You can't just go full force with no mercy on your body. No, that's not the way to approach this yoga. You want to be able to do this yoga for a good long time. I'm 53 years old. I'm still doing this yoga. So I want you to be able to practice this for a good long time and not, um, not consider this to be some sort of fad exercise. It's not a fad. Yoga's been around for a long, long time. It's been around longer than P90X and all those crazy things. So much longer. It's been around for much longer than Pilates and all those fad exercises. So everybody, practice your yoga. It's going to be good for you. So left side of your space for standing separate leg, stretching posture. Feet together, toes and heels touch. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, right foot steps out to the right. Four feet distance, arms down parallel, palms are facing down. Pivot and turn. Whoops, that's not a pivot and turn yet. So it's a four feet distance. Pigeon toe your toes inward. Two heels in one line. With your back lat spine straight, chin up, swan dive forward. Go for your grip, either on the outside of the feet, back to the heels, big toes, or you can place your hands on the floor in front of you. So the name of the game here is to try to get your back flat and not rounded. So initially your back is, this is an exaggeration of course, but initially your back will look kind of rounded like this. And then initially you might not be able to get your legs straight. So work on getting your legs really straight, shift your body weight more towards your toes, and try to get your back flatter. How can you achieve this? Well, if you simply tilt your chin up, that gets the upper half flatter. If you pelvic tilt your pelvis forward and down, like imagine a bowl filled with water and you're trying to tilt the bowl forward, you're gonna get the lower half flatter. So let's try it. There we go, look at that. So initially it's like that. You want it to look like that. So you wanna tilt this bowl up towards the sky and tilt the front of the bowl down. So now, if you can get your hands on the floor like this with your back flat, so you can get your elbows on the floor with your back flat. It's gonna be much more intense now, especially around here. And you wanna get your back as flat as possible. If you can do that, then grab onto your feet. Don't proceed with the grabbing of the feet until you can do those steps, until you get your back flat. Now in this case, right here, your back's going to round again, so you're going to straight, lift the hip high in the air, quick tilt your pelvis forward and down, lift the chin up, get the back as flat as possible, then proceed, inhale deeply, exhale, bend your elbows towards the shins, gently but firmly, pull forward, stretch forward, try to touch your forehead to the floor, say to yourself, I can touch my forehead to the floor, inhale again, exhale, pull forward, stretch forward, get closer to the floor, and change, arms parallel, Right foot steps back to the left, arms up, arms slow down, take a breath, breathe.
and we'll go for the second set. Are you sweating yet? That's a good thing. Sweating is a response, um, response by the body. It's a necessary thing sometimes to sweat. Second set. Swan down. And continue from where you left off. If you had your hands on the floor, your elbows on the floor, go for that. If you had a grip from the first set, go for that. Remember, legs are straight, spine straight, stomach is in, hips butt up in the air. Inhale deeply. Exhale, bend elbows towards the cheeks. Gently but firmly pull forward, stretch forward, and try to touch your forehead to the floor. Change, arms parallel, come back, and breathe. The next posture is triangle posture. This is what I call Bikram's triangle because it seems like every other yoga lineage has triangle done with um, straight legs. So this one has a bent knee on the primary leg. So let's begin. It starts off like warrior one. Five foot distance between the feet. Pivot and turn the right foot. 90 degrees, bend on the right knee. You're in warrior one. Spine is straight. Left foot flat, flat on the floor. Windmill the arms. Right elbow to right knee, stretch your left arm up. Stretching the arms equally in opposite directions. Narrow the side body. Left it forward, right knee back. Turn and twist the upper body back, hard to the side. Lengthen the neck, chin to the shoulder. Change. Come back, flip the feet, other side. Warrior one, spine straight, and the arms. Left elbow to left knee, stretch the right arm up. Stretching the arms equally opposite directions, narrow the side body. Right hip forward, left knee back, turn and twist the upper body back, heart to the sky. Lengthen the neck, chin to the shoulder. Change. Come back. So standing, starting. And breathe. Now we move on to the second set. Change. Other side. Change. Take a breath and breathe. The next posture is Dande Mana Vibhaktapada Janashrasana, which is standing separate leg, head to knee. So in this posture, you're forced to give yourself an introspective look at yourself. So for most people, the biggest uh, problem with their bodies, they always look at their bellies and they go, oh, if I only were thinner, blah, 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 without concentrating on working on every part of the body. So this one, you're going to be concentrating on what is potentially the not so nicest part of your body, and that's okay. We have to learn to love ourselves. And through yoga, we get that introspective look at ourselves. So it's good to actually look in the mirror sometimes and confront yourself and then say to yourself, how can I improve what I am right now? First, you have to learn to love yourself. And then once you do love yourself, you can proceed to take the necessary steps to do what's necessary to help guide you to your goal. So, get together, 
Chips and hands touch. Inhale, raise your arms up, squeeze your palms. Cross the thumbs, stretch up out of the waist. Let's self step out to the right, three feet distance. Pick up the toes, pivot up the heels 90 degrees. Left hip forward, right hip back. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest. Suck your belly in, round down. Touch your forehead to your knee. Try to keep your hips parallel to the wall in front of you. Try to keep your hips and even level parallel to the floor. Try to keep both legs as straight as possible. Otherwise, you can bend the right knee. You can separate your hands, use your fingertips for balance. Try to push your fingertips in the mat, get the forehead higher up onto the knee. Keep the belly sucked in, look at your belly and breathe. Change. Long round out. Chin comes up last. Pivot and turn, pivot and turn. Stretch up again, right hip forward, left hip back. Tuck chin to the chest. Suck the belly in, round down. Forehead to knee. Bend the left leg if you need to. Spread your hands apart if you need to. Both feet flat on the floor. Right leg straight and strong. With the forehead sinking off to the knee. Push the fingertips on the neck, get the forehead higher up onto the knee. Square your hips to the front wall and the floor. Change. One round out. Chin comes up last. Take a turn. Right foot slips back to the left. Arms forward down. Take a breath and breathe. Now, areas for emphasis in this. What can you do to make your posture better? So in every posture, there's a continual stretch component. So if you're in this posture, if your arms aren't continuously stretching outward, then technically you're not getting the full benefits of the posture. So in this case, when I ask you to raise your arms up, squeeze your palms together and cross your thumbs, stretch it by the waist, you are going to continuously stretch beyond your fingertips at this point throughout the posture. Step out to the right, you're still stretching down your fingertips. Pick up the toes, pivot in the heels. 90 degrees, you're still stretching up. Stretch up, touch into the chest, suck the in, round down, you're still stretching down your fingertips. Stretch and stretch and stretch your arms. You're still stretching up. Your legs are straight, perhaps. Then you can go for an alternate bind, and then you're still stretching up. Stretching up and up and up. Looking at your belly, suck your belly and breathe. You're still stretching up and change. Come back out. Come back out. Chin comes up last. You're still stretching up. You're still stretching up. Right hip forward, left hip back. You're still stretching up. Tuck chin to the chest. Round down. Suck the belly in. You're still stretching down your fingertips. Now your forehead's on the knee. If your front leg is straight, go for the alternate bind. You're still stretching up and up and up. Still stretching up. Suck your belly in. Look at your belly. Breathe. Still stretching up, still stretching up. Change, come back up. You're still stretching beyond your fingertips. As you unround out, chin comes up last. Pivot and turn, you're still stretching up. Arms now float down and you breathe. Was that intense? It should have been. Yoga can be as intense or as gentle as you want to make it. But in this case, you are improving yourself very, very rapidly by just making little, little small changes to your practice to increase the intensity of the practice. So increasing the intensity of this practice is not for everybody. If you are just trying to maintain uh, your flexibility that you have now and you're okay and satisfied with it, then you can just go through the motions of the class and just make sure that and the stretches and the pulls and things like that. But if you want to improve yourself, you have to increase your intensity. Don't increase it to a point where you're going into a place of pain. No, you should never see yoga as a painful experience. If you feel pain, you need to back off to the previous step and just stay there for the time being because that's where you're at at this point in time. If you can, if you want to make it more intense, then you push yourself a little bit more each day. But pushing yourself means basically a micro millimeter 
of improvement. So that's a tiny bit of improvement. Sometimes it's just in your mind what the improvement is. But other times it's an actual physical change. So tree posture. This may appear to be the simplest of all of the postures. It is not. Watch how we can make it even more intense. So left leg, left toe pushing into the ground, hips, shoulders squared in the front wall. Balance on your on your foot, hands in prayer. Is this easy to you? If it is, go for this. Stretch up, stretch intensely beyond your fingertips. Stretch up and up and up and up and up. Stretch up and up and up and up. Open up your arms. Learn how to balance. Do it again. Learn how to balance while you're in motion. And then place your right foot down. Was that still easy for you? That's okay. You're just practicing something that you are familiar with then. So now, other side. Now, if this is very challenging for you, I encourage you to try, if you can, just to develop this posture step by step. So the first step is to get that balance on your leg. Second step, can I get one or more, one or both hands together in prayer? And then if you find it to be easy after a few months of this, stretch up and stretch up and stretch up. Make this a more mobile posture for you. Stretch up and up and up. And change. Reverse the order of the steps. Come out. Toe stand. So if you have knee or ankle issues, just do another set of tree. Otherwise, proceed with toe stand. So everybody starts off in tree. Then for toe stand, hinge from the lower way, stretch forward, hands on the floor. Gently bend to the left knee. Lower yourself down. Hover above your heel. Walk the hands around the knees next to the hips. Spine is straight. Toes are pointed above the right foot. One or both hands together in prayer. It may or may not happen, that's okay. Just working towards it. Spine is straight and lifted. Balance here and breathe. Then change. Sometimes we have a good toe stand day, other times not. That's okay. That's how the ball rolls sometimes. Every day is a different day. Sometimes we might all do an excellent standing head knee and then a terrible toe stand. And that just happens. Try to come back into tree. And sometimes you lose your balance just like that. And that's okay. Because every day is a different day. We are only human. If I were to do every posture perfectly, first of all, first thing that would happen is in your mind you'd go, oh wait, I can't do that. She's doing everything perfectly and I can never do that. No, don't say never. Never say never. You can do this. Just put your mind to it. You can do anything. Tree, toe. Once you start saying, yeah, I can never do this, and, and you put these self-doubt thoughts in your mind, then that's going to be a very difficult thing to overcome because you basically, you basically have very little faith in yourself. And what this yoga class is all about is to gain more confidence as well as gain a sharper focus and develop strength, balance, and flexibility. And this is why I feel these things called the yoga championships, while well, some may scoff at things like this, the thing about the yoga is that they can help students develop confidence in themselves. Some people don't have confidence and lack confidence to go on stage and present what they know to the world. And the truth of the matter is, it is hard to do that. You're there, you're spotlighted in front of everyone. It's like you're doing a solo performance. So many of you have taken acting. I know many actors who've gone into yoga and they go up on stage and they freeze because typically 
when you're acting, you're acting with a group of people. When you're doing a yoga championship, you're basically, that's just you up there. You're doing a solo performance. And some people have never had that experience before. So they freeze up and they convince themselves they can't do it. But in reality, if they just continue practicing, they would be able to do it. Maybe not easily, but easier than before. So have confidence in yourself. And the only way to do that is to continually practice your yoga and continually work on your presentation skills of yoga. So you can demonstrate to the world what you know. So we're lying here in Shavasana. It's basically dead man's pose. You're not speaking. I'm actually babbling. So actually, I'm moving my facial muscles, and I shouldn't be doing that, too. But anyway, in your case, we want it to be resting and relaxing and recharging for the floor series, which is coming up next. So the next posture is Pavanamuttasana, wing moving posture. Connect your feet together, right leg up. Right, bend the right knee, interlace the fingers to the webbing, grab onto the right knee, pull the right knee towards the right shoulder. Keep your left leg straight, left foot flexed back, right foot is dangling. Both shoulder blades on the mat. Inhale, exhale, pull. On every exhale, pull a little bit more deeply until you meet that point of resistance. And then you hold it there and freeze it there and feel it in your right hip joint. And keep breathing right here. Keep breathing. Breathing your belly. Belly massaging the inner thigh. The inner thigh massaging the belly. Then change. Right leg down. Left leg up. Then the left knee. Interlace the fingers. Grab on the left knee. Pull the knee towards your left shoulder. Right leg straight. Right foot flex back. Left foot dangling, both shoulder blades still on the mat. Keep breathing. Inhale, exhale, pull. And every exhale, pull a little bit more deeply until you meet that point of resistance. And you hold it there and freeze it there. Feel it in your left hip joint. Keep breathing. Change. Left foot down. Both legs up, knees together. Ankle bones together, feet side by side. Wrap your arms around your knees. Grab opposite elbows if you can. Pull the knees down into your chest, making yourself really compact. Like you're giving yourself a big hug. The eyes are looking down, the gaze is looking at that spot on the ceiling where the ceiling and the wall meet. Back of the head on the floor. Flatten your whole back on the floor. Change. And then Shavasana on the floor from this point on is about 10 to 20 seconds. So second set, right leg up, pull right knee towards the right shoulder. Keep pulling until you can't pull anymore. Then you hold it there, freeze it there, feel it in your right hip joint. Change, left leg up. Pull the left knee towards the left shoulder. Keep pulling until you can't pull anymore. Then hold it there. Freeze it there. Feel it in your left hip joint. Change. Both legs up. Hold the knees into the chest to make yourself really compact. Giving yourself a big hug. Actually, your eyes should actually be looking at that space between your arms and your knees. You should be able to see your feet through that chain. Change. Arms and legs down. Breathe. We're going to be going into a series of sit-ups from this point on. So, feet together, flex your feet back, arms over your head, cross your thumbs, inhale, stretch back, double jerk, double exhale. Come on up. Forehead and knees. Turn around, lie down on your belly. Spine strengthening series, Bhujangasana. Forward posture. Chin forward, looking forward, hands palm flat, the either side of the chest, tops of the fingers and the tops of the shoulders, pinky fingers and the dots. So we position this camera so you can actually see this better. There we go. It's probably better. Yes. Sorry, folks, I don't have my own camera person today. So. This is what we have. Tops of the feet flat on the floor. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Look up and peel up. Use your back muscles. Stretch your elbows down towards your hips. Inhale again. 
Exhale, look up, lift up, come up, more. belly button, everything go around the floor. Change. Maybe you're still breathing in that posture. Toes touch, heels fall apart. Turn your head over to the right. Arms down by your side. Let's see. Turn to the right. Turn to the left. And second set. Same as before. Hands, palms flat, either side of the chest. Tops of the fingers and line of the tops of the shoulders. Pinky fingers in line with the deltoid muscles. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Stretch all those down. Inhale. Exhale. Change. Turn the head over to the left. Arms down by your side. Big toes touch. Heels fall apart. Turn the head over to the right. And the next posture is straight arms underneath your body. Palms are facing down. Chin forward, looking forward. Right leg up. Relax the left leg. Keep the right leg straight, toes pointed back. Change. Left leg up. Right leg is relaxed. Left leg straight. Change. Chin down, mouth on the floor. Both legs. Change. Arms out to the side. Turn your head over to the right. Keep breathing. Turn your head over to the left. Keep breathing. Straight arms beneath your body. Palms facing down. So if this is uncomfortable to you, you can just keep your arms down by your sides. Right leg up. Keep your hands and your palms facing the mat. Change. Left leg up. Change. Chin down. Both things together. Both legs up. Change. Arms out by the side. Turn your head over to the left. Turn your head over to the right. And now, corner of the the full locust posture. Arms out by the side like airplane is. You can have your arms up at an angle if you don't have enough room on either side. Inhale deeply. Legs are together. Exhale, lift everything up off the floor. And then your hip bones are on the floor. Body up, chest up, legs up, thighs up, arms up, arms back. Fly, breathe, lift up, look up some more, lift up some more. Come up to your highest point, change. Turn your head over the right. Turn your head over to the left. Turn your head over to the upper right. Turn your head over to the upper left. Second side. Let's get ready to fly. Inhale deeply. Exhale lift. Fly and breathe and lift up. Arms back. Keep the tops of your fingers at or just below the top of your head. Change. Come down. Arms down by your side. Turn your head over to the left. You're breathing now. Turn your head over to the right. Make sure you're breathing. Turn your head over to the upper left. Make sure you're breathing. Turn your head over to the upper right. And make sure you're breathing. Next posture is Dhanurasana, bow pose. 
Bend your knees, grab the outsides of the feet. Two to three inches below the toes. Keep your wrists straight. Six inches apart between the knees and feet. Inhale deeply. Exhale, look up and kick up. Kick your legs up towards the ceiling. Continuously keep kicking. Do not stop kicking. Continuously kick. And kick. Kick up some more. Change. Slowly lower down. Turn your head over to the right. Breathe. Turn your head over to the left. Breathe. Turn your head over to the upper right. Breathe. Turn your head over to the upper left. And breathe. Second set. Try to keep your forearms and wrists straight here. Toes are pointed up, shoulders are down. Inhale deeply. Exhale, look up and kick up. Kick up high. Look up high. Create a dewdrop shape with your body. Breathe. Change. Arms down by your side, turn your head over to the left. Breathe. Turn your head over to the right. Breathe. Turn your head over to the upper left. Breathe. Turn your head over to the upper right. Breathe. Do a little push up. Top of your space. Let's get into tabletop. This is Parmasana. Four hip to lean, extend the leg out, four hip to lean, extend the leg out. Other side, four hip to lean, extend the leg out, four hip to lean, extend the leg out. Top of the space, knees together, open up your feet, sit in between the heels, butt on the floor. If your butt's not touching the floor, stay here in this first part of your pose. Grab onto your toes, from the inside, fingers on the outside. Extend your Spine up towards the ceiling, drop your head back, lift your chest up. Get straight up in the sky. This is part one. Part two, if you can, right elbow down, left elbow down. Drop your head back, lift chest up. This is part two, part three. Top of the head, back of the head, shoulders on the floor. Rest the upper body on the floor. Arms over your head, grab opposite elbows, pull the elbows down towards the floor. Now if your knees lift up, you want to separate the knees. Otherwise, keep the knees touching. You want to try to keep the knees on the ground. So separate the knees if the knees are not touching the ground. And then doing inhales and exhales. Inhale, lift your chest up towards the ceiling, arching the spine, creating a beautiful human bridge, and then exhale. Four inhales, exhales on your own. And change. Hands back in your feet. Elbows on the ground. Lift the chest. Turn around. Lie down. Chest. Another slip, please. Top of the space. Second set. Remember, if your butt's not touching the ground, stay here in this part one. Part one, part two, and part three. Now, inhale, exhale on your own. Change. 
another sip. Ardha Konasana, half tortoise posture. Knees, feet, heels together. Inhale, raise your arms up, squeeze the palms, stretch up out of the waist, come on down. Forehead, pinky fingers touching the floor first if you can. Inhale, stretch forward, exhale, sink the hips back. Inhale, stretch forward, straighten the arms, lock the elbows. Exhale, sink the hips back, hips touching the heels if you can. Change, come on out, arms with your ears. Arms float down, turn around, lie down, shavasana. Another sit up, please. And second set. Let's go for the continual stretch beyond our fingertips, just like we did in standing second leg, so head to knee. So inhale. Continuously stretching, stretching up, up and up and up, and then come down, continuously stretch forward, stretch, stretch and stretch. And when you're in this position here, don't rest, keep stretching forward, keep continuously stretching forward. And then sink your hips back, continue to stretch forward, knees together, sink your hips back, and change as you come out, continuously stretch beyond your fingertips, stretch, 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 stretch. And just move down, turn around, lie down. Shasana. Turn your head over to the left. Turn your head over to the right. Turn your head to the upper left. Turn your head to the upper right. Another step, please. Come to the top of your space for a camel posture. Knees and feet six inches apart, hands on the lower back. Roll the shoulders and elbows back. Extend the spine up. Come down halfway. Look at the wall behind you. If you can, reach down one hand at a time. Grab onto the heels. And breathe. Change, one hand up at a time. Hips to the heels. Turn around, lie down, Shavasana. In the next set, we're gonna be focusing on where to direct our breathing. First set is all about getting used to the posture, especially if you're a beginner, getting used to the posture. It's our deepest back bend of the day. Other sit up, please. Second set. You can keep your knees six inches apart, or you can separate them eight to ten inches apart, your choice. Keep your feet six inches apart, hands on your lower back, and the elbows and shoulders in. Lengthen the spine, drop your head back. One hand down at a time. Thumbs on the outside, fingers on the inside. With every inhale, lift the chest up. With every exhale, drive the hips forward. Chain, one hand up at a time. Hips to the heels. Come around, come on down, touch your legs. Eventually, you want to get your thighs, the front of your thighs, parallel to the wall in front of you. You can. Another sit up, please. Next posture is Shasangasana, rabbit posture. 
So just like in Ardha Karmasana, knees, feet, heels together, spine is straight. You're grabbing onto your heels this time. Thumbs on the outside, fingers on the inside. Extend the spine up. Suck the belly in, tuck chin to the chest, round down. Forehead somewhere here, then roll forward, getting the top of the head to touch the ground. Lifting the butt up high. Try to get your thighs perpendicular to the floor if you can. You'll suck your belly in to stretch your lower spine. So, the point about this one is don't lean all of your body weight into your head. So, most of the body weight should be here between the knees and the tops of the feet. There should be about 10% body weight on the top of your head. I should be able to take a piece of paper and slide it under your head easily. So, that's how very little body weight there should be on top of your head. So maintain that point of lightness, lightness in the top of your head. Most of the body weight is on your base, your knees to the tops of the feet. Other side, please. Shasangasana, set two. Turn around, Shivasana. Reverse the Head to knee with deep stretching is next. Right leg out and left leg in. Arms up, stretch up, turn to the right, come on down, forehead to the knee. If you can't touch your forehead to the knee here, then of course, bend your knee up a little. A little, a little or a lot. A little or a lot. <laughs> forehead to the knee. And then drive your heel forward until the avoid is straight. Flex the toes back, kick the heel forward. Here, try to bend your elbows towards your calves. If you can touch your calves to the floor, then you lift the heel up off the ground. It's easier to touch your elbows to the floor if you're here. So some people prefer to do it here. And then reverse out. Other side. Change. Both legs together. Down and up for sit up. Grab onto the big toes. Walk the hips back. Spine is straight. Hips back. Legs straight. Hips back. Chest forward. Shoulders back. Inhale. Spine is straight, chest lifted. Exhale, bend elbows outwards, pull and stretch forward and down. Pull and stretch, pull and stretch, pull and stretch. Change, release your grip. Turn around, pull down, shavasana. So the second set, we can turn it on a little bit more. Don't be too overzealous in, in these stretches because you really can harm yourself. Use your group. This is now we're entering the deepest stretch of the class, so you want to be very extra careful. <clears throat> extra careful with your, excuse me, extra careful with how you approach these postures. 
So you can do a lot of damage in this particular posture. I know that for a fact. I did it myself. So don't get your results. Most of you know I'm strong as F, and I'm like, even I hurt myself with these postures, so you have to be very careful. So here we go. And let's start. On occasion, I like to just bring my hands down just to prove that I can touch my elbows to the ground. But really, this is more of a challenge when you have your hands grabbing the ball. A lot of my students hate when I teach it that way because they, they can't get their elbows to touch the ground. <laughs> And you know what? Nothing in this world, nothing in life is ever worth it. It's free. You know, like there are many good free things, but really, the harder you work towards something, the more fulfilling that that achievement will feel. We live in a world these days where everybody gets an award for everything that they do. Whether you're first place or tenth place, or you didn't even rank, you still get an award. And that's really weird. The world shouldn't be that way. In the past, there was just first, second, and third place, and that's it. Like anything beyond third place, you don't get an award. You don't you don't even get a pat on your back. You just get a ranking that says you're not first, second, or third. That's it. So go forward. When I was fourth place in the Northeast Regional, what did I get? I didn't get anything. I didn't get a certificate. I didn't get a medal. I didn't get any gifts or anything like that. And I was only like a fraction of a point away from third place. So I got nothing. And you know what? That teaches you a lesson. The lesson is you have to work hard to achieve something. If you truly believe it, you can work hard and you achieve it. It's going to feel that much better. It's going to feel worth it. Because if everybody got an award for fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth place, twentieth place, why have the so called competition? And really, what's the competition about? Is it about competing against your fellow yoga people? Well, a small part it is, but it's also about demonstrating the very best postures you can make. So maybe the best that you can do is fourth place. And if that's the case, that's wonderful. That's how you should see it. Another side. And our final posture for today is spine twist. So I'm going to teach you a variant of spine twist. This is my version of spine twist. We have our hips parallel to the, to the wall in front of us. And the left knee is forward. Our right heel is against the left knee corner. We're going to have this whole leg structure straight. So leg pointed, foot pointed this way. This foot pointed that way. We're going to extend our spines up towards the ceiling. We're going to use our left bent elbow as a brace. Place it behind this right knee. And turn and twist your upper body. Extend your spine up. Turn your upper body. Swing your left hand over. Grab onto the left knee. And then swing your right hand around, grab onto the left inner thigh. Inhale, stretch up, stretch spine up, exhale, turn and twist your head some more. Inhale, stretch your spine up, exhale, turn and twist some more. Try to see what's behind you. Chin, over, change. Untwist out. And try the opposite side. Those of you who know, you know that I can do a really, really good spine twist. So I've been recovering from my own spinal injury the past few months. So hopefully I'll be able to get myself back into that championship state again. Inhale, stretch the spine up. Exhale, turn and twist. Inhale, stretch the spine up. Exhale, turn and twist. Chin over the left shoulder to turn. 
and twist, turn around, lie down, and shavasana. And we have one more breathing exercise, and we are done in this beginning of the class. Another set of things. And we turn around for Kapalabhati breathing. And this breathing exercise, we're going to be breathing only through our mouths. The inhales will happen automatically. So we're not consciously inhaling. We're just consciously exhaling, forcing the air out. So spine is straight, arms are straight, fingers are together. 100 breaths at about the 50th point mark. I'm going to motion you to go a little bit faster. So everybody inhale deeply. Exhale out completely. Inhale halfway. And begin. A sip of water for blood. And let's turn around and lie down in final shavasana. Head towards one direction, feet towards another. Rest, recharge, relax. Please enjoy shavasana. Resting completely, not moving a muscle, not moving a bone. Relax and breathe. Thank you all for joining me today for 10 a.m. yoga class and sharing your time with me. I hope the rest of your day is peaceful, blissful, and still. Namaste.